So here we go again. This is not going to be every single little step because this is kind of sort of an intermediate, possibly advanced, if you would consider this advanced type of watch me tutorial. So some of the steps I'm going to skip, but I'm going to tell you what I did and I hope you you are able to follow follow along independently. I am changing some things. So originally I was going to just interface with like the fusible interface on the the main pieces. So right now I actually have this switch. Let me let me flip this. And I also changed the pattern. Uh because I I think I I kind of briefly mentioned this in in my previous videos. I should have just freaking made the pattern myself and not used a store-bought pattern but I thought it would help the tutorial like if I could have like a reference pattern that someone could just grade for themselves but for the corset part I just I ended up with some changes and I do also want to show you the the other dress which is the reception dress because remember I mentioned I was making two of kind of the same dress one is like a shorter tulle puffy dress and the other one is like the gown as I'm showing in my thumbnails so I also did some changes on that and let me let me show you which I ended up copying the lining pattern that I did on the reception dress that I changed for the actual lace-up corset back now of course this is not a real steel bone corset you know it's a special occasion gown type version of a corset that you'd find in the stores so do take that into account as I'm showing you what I did to make the first one. Let me show you that one. So here is the reception dress that I was talking about. I'm about eh, 90 something percent done. Really the only, I, I already had the final fitting with it and I do have to take some of this in, which is why I've been telling you now I redid the outside pattern just completely as you just saw the the video I did right now I I did like a princess seam here like for the the protrusion of the the breast area it's not all one piece like you saw how my pattern looked like way 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 in the beginning because this is still the original pattern but I had a dart here and I have a dart here but it's still like one whole piece for the whole front so for the corset I'm just going to because I had to end up doing that for the lining. So that way you could put the, the cup in. And, and of course the lining also has to have like a concave protrusion coming out this way, right? Because breasts come out this way, you know what I mean? Um, otherwise it would have looked like nuts inside. So I did that and I, so I need to take this in more on her to make it more, more of a curvature to her breast, which is why again, I'm just like, I'm just making a new pattern pretty much. Um, this is why I don't like store-bought patterns. Um, and just to go off, I, I still need to tack this down, which is what I'm saying. Like it's part of my 96% being done. Well, I'm a little back now that I have to do some, some more alterations, but allow me. Man, and this mannequin is just like falling apart. Like, pfft. look at that. Terrible. I have to like insert this in there or else it collapses and then the measurements, it you know, it becomes too small for this dress and this dress just falls off. Like, dude, everything is just, it's ghetto. Everything I do is ghetto. It's the worst channel ever, I swear to God. Um, But yeah, so I just kind of like, brought over some of the uh, patch pieces most of the um of this front part is sewn on after i've done the main shell which is in in this case i'm going over again the front the the main part minus the lining is going to be three pieces so I'll, i'm changing it so i have like a, a non-stretch cotton twill behind the black and then on top of the black main fabric is this mesh so it's three pieces and then once i have all that bodice done then i went over and i hand stitched in place with like a basting stitch just to follow the curve 
and all this because it's it's covering like the darts you don't see the darts in this it looks like one one piece but it's just the you know so i hand tacked that down and then once it looked like everything was flat and wrinkle free then i took that to my machine and i stitched around the whole patch and you know and i i clipped as much as i could closest to the stitch lines in the patch but but this is the reception dress and i just Oh my God, I love the way it looks. It looks so good. That's this, but we're going to do this with the gown. So again, with the changes I made, now I'm going to have the lining in the exact same cut, just like this, because this is going to help with the, the cup protrusion of the breast and cups in the corset. It just needed to be done, and I'm not sure if I could do another tutorial in the future using a store-bought pattern. Yeah, it's it just frustrates me. Um, so as you could see, you could use whatever color of un like thick cotton twill that you want. I mean, it's black. It's not a white main fabric, so you could put whatever you want in there. As long as it doesn't stretch, because of course it has to be sturdy. And I didn't think that the interfacing would hold up to my standards. You know what I'm saying? So right now I have all three placed together. I'm going to match the bottoms and then I'm going to just match it and sew it. Same thing, sew it. I have my back pieces on the table in the same manner with the non-stretch thick cotton twill, whatever you have. Definitely no stretch at all in that. The main fabric and then the mesh overlay. So I'm going to sew all that together. If you're following along and you know how to sew, you know what you're doing, go ahead and do that. And then we will come right back to the next part. Where I last left off, assuming, again, I, I'm assuming you can do some sewing. You've already cut out your patterns and your pieces. You've refitted yourself um, from your mock-up and all that stuff. Just to make sure that the, the actual cut pieces fit you well, right? So what I did here, and this is one thing, if you don't have a mannequin and you can do this, it's one of those things where you are going to have to either A, make your own mannequin, like they have tutorials for duct tape mannequins all over the web, you can do that, so that way you can do what I'm doing here, or you just wear like, um, a, you know, your t-shirt and you put the cups where your, your breasts lie, you pin it in place. And then you act as like a live mannequin where you're, or in this case, if you want to fit yourself, you would put it, you know, inside out. So that way you can pinch off the parts that you need to get better fitted for the alterations. Um, that's what I mean. So I did that. As you can see, I have shaped it. Also with this, I wanted to make, so I have half inch seam allowances. So I did a half inch, so you can, so I can see for myself, this neon is going to get pulled out later, but I did a really big base stitch just to help me stay in line. Also, when I, when I go to put in the overlay of our peacock, just, just to help keep me, cause I don't want to put too much, especially if there's like a beaded section that's going to come up here. I don't like sewing over sequins or beads because I run the risk of breaking my um, needle. So I like to do that so that way if there is like a beaded part, I know to stay below this this indication, this margin. So that's what I the why I did that. And also some of these parts up here, the mesh is like flopping away from the base. So it's also another way just to tack everything down as I'm handling it and putting this on. Like everything just stays together. And that thing slips, slips out of place. So I did that. I have my whole piece here. This is ready to have to start having me cut out the peacock pieces and arrange them as so. I did show you in a previous scene, slide, or whatever of this video the other version that I did so you can see how that looks. Which that version is a zip up back. Uh, so I modified the, the pattern slightly in the, in the back. But this is going to be done in the same way. But I did want to show you how it's supposed to come out pretty much in the end. Same thing here. I cut out the lining in the same fashion. So 
So I redid, I redid these. Um, let me see if, if you can see. So I, I reinforced all the seams. I put some inner uh, interfacing down. So everywhere where you see a white piece, that's a seam. So I, that's a piece, that's a piece. The, the boob pieces in the front, they kind of stick out like a, like a letter P and then you sew the P's together and that's how you end up getting this protrusion for your cups. Of course, in doing this, I did have to really go back and take in a lot more to properly fit the cups. But you see how it, see how it really um, just shapes and curves around the cup. That's what you have to do. So you do have to do this P princess seam, I guess you could call it kind of way. So you can have cups within the lining. And you can look up patterns like this on Pinterest or whatever. So I did do some modifications for this corset pattern. Originally, let me show you the, the paper pattern. And this is how I did it on the other one. So you can see a flat version. And these cutouts is just for me to like mark on the fabric where my cup was gonna go. But see how I just had a dart and then there was a dart up here, but there's still a space where it's like still part of the whole pattern. Well, for this, what I ended up doing so that way I can have a better placement to put in the cup, I joined that, that whole line and I did a, like a P. I don't know if you are able to tell. You could tell better on the lining, but I did the same thing here. See how there's kind of a slight curve outwards and that's to make it convex for, to, to hold in the cups. And it, it, it just, and this is where I'm complaining about that pattern. If it had had that built in in the beginning, I, it would have saved myself so much trouble. But this is such a this is such a better fit if I'm doing it like that. So see how it's it, it like it just it hugs the the cups like it, that's just what you have to end up doing. So that's a change on my behalf. Of course, in the lining, there's a seam down the middle too. But this one I kept it still one whole piece. I just joined those darts and I made, I kind of altered the pattern so it makes that P in the bust area for the cups. Um, also, so once you sew that and you have your perfect curves, all the alterations done on it, you do have to clip the curves in here, which as you can see, I did that and then iron them completely flat. Now, now that I've done that to the lining, let me hold this back here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start cutting out the boning. Let me flip this over. So right now I'm just gonna like measure, but first before I do that, I am gonna do in the same way I did with that neon stitch at the top, I'm gonna go to my machine and again, for margins to keep myself in check with my measurements. I'm going to do on my biggest stitch in my machine, half inch stitch, like a seam allowance, half inch down, all the way around the top and the bottom. Because, and let me tell you why, that will help you right now when I go to sew in the boning. I have to, I have to stay within the seam allowance when I put in my boning or else I'm gonna strike it with my machine when I go to, to sew it. When I go to, to add the, the lining and the actual piece. So let's say this is half an inch right here at the end of my fingertips. I have to cut the boning to start here, not up here, but down here where it was half inch in and end half inch up before I, I get to the bottom of this part. Because again, when I'm gonna put the, combine this with the actual piece, you know, I'm gonna put them right sides together, stitch them half an inch and then flip it. If I have the, the boning way up here at the top, I'm gonna sew through it, I'm gonna strike it, probably break a few needles and it's gonna be super awkward. Like it's, you're, you're gonna make like, like pyramid points all along the part. It, it's not gonna look good. 
So we want to avoid that. So everywhere where I have a, um, a seam, I'm going to put a boning in there. Also, oh, and look at me. I forgot to do this part. I put an interfacing down at the edge, which I also need to do on this side. And I'm going to put in boning on the side too, just to help reinforce the, when, I, when we get to the, the loops for the lace up. It, it, again, it just helps with tension. It'll also keep this back part smooth with no bubbling or whatever. Or not whatever, but bubbling. You've seen it where people have like corseted tops and it's just fabric. There's like absolutely, you know, it's just like a cheapy fabric one from like Sheen or Wish or something. And it does like bubbling in the area where, where it is. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll, sh I'll show some clips of me also right now when I put in the boning so you can know how to work with it because you can't just sew in boning like that. I'm going to be making like little squares to cover the top and you also want to kind of cut it in an, like a curve, like an arc up here. I've seen some people actually melt it too with a lighter, which uh, I'm not too sure. I'm, I've been super clumsy lately. I might set something on fire, so I'm not even going to do that. But that's also an option. So I'll put that in and then I'll show you how to insert them. So I've already done some here. As you can see, I I encased the, the ends because that's what I'm doing. And here, see that's jagged. So I'm gonna cut it like, like a hump. Take off the corners because it'll, if you have it sharp, eventually it'll start um, coming through your your clothing so see how i kind of arch that then i just have to the side of me of the the same material i have for the 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 line the the interfacing of my bodice i have some some relatively longish strips of cotton which i'm just going to fold over i mean it doesn't have to be like so oh my gosh perfect just just enough so it's like that. So as you can see, I already did all of this. I'm going to do the the center part here. And also, I I just showed a picture, you know, the picture right now I showed of of my placement. So I'm working my way from like right side in so that way I have all the proper pieces for the lengths, you know, because every section of this is like almost a different length, some more than others. So I flattened this section out with my iron. I had it on the polyester setting, no steam. And I just ironed it completely straight because, I mean, this is like the center of your chest. There's no boob. There's no curve. There's no, you know, curve on the side of your body. So this, I, I figured I would just need to make this part flat. So I'm going to cover this. Over this I can kind of feel with my finger where that center seam is so I kind of want to place the boning right smack in the center of that and see how I'm placing it right below the my seam allowance stitch guide. So I'm just sewing it on the side. I'm gonna give it a little push because it needs some help. And then I have one hand under here and I'm just feeling the center and then just putting it on top there. You can pin this, but I find I just work faster this way, especially on the, maybe not on this section because I, I flattened it, but on the ones that have, that I, I didn't flatten out with the iron, like it has a curve. It's just gonna be pulled away from the tension, like the, the pins are gonna pop out. Like for me, it's just super frustrating. So I do it freehand like this. You can always baste 
these also if you want to make sure that you're getting it you know very straight but I feel I do okay doing it this way Sometimes it wants to kind of push out. So I'm just trying to retrain it down there to stay down from coming up. Right here, you still want to go slow. Because sometimes you don't know, maybe you cut it kind of crooked and there's still a long part and your needle strikes it and then there you go breaking a needle. So as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm like trying to keep this straight because sometimes it can come underneath and then you start sewing in parts of that. So as you sew it, just kind of pull. Finish that for all your remaining seams. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna go about connecting the cups to the liner. So what I'm gonna do here is I already make sure my cups were properly placed and I pinned them while it was on my mannequin. You know, I just kind of make sure everything was even and now I'm gonna go ahead and secure them to the lining. I'm not, I'm not gonna do like all the way around. They're gonna be, I guess, somewhat floating is maybe what I'm trying to describe here. So I'm only gonna do two parts with the machine with a zigzag stitch, make sure it's nice and secure. And then I'm going to do, look, so let me show you. So I'm gonna go with a zigzag stitch just on the points. Do it right here. I also have to be mindful because this cup that I got, it's one of those molded gel filled cups. So I do have to be very careful with where I sew because you can puncture it and then you got leakage, which would be just the most, like I, I couldn't even imagine that happening. Uh, ruin everything so I'm gonna do on these points right here a zigzag stitch a tight one same with this point over here this point and on the other side so where and then where it's pinned to the boning here and here I am going to hand stitch it to the boning casing really well and then so it's going to be so technically these so basically these cups are going to be sewn in four points and that's it. So let me go ahead and do that. And before you do this, make sure that you double, triple check. Make sure that both your cups, if you look at it, are like, you know, from a distance that they're even. You, you know, you know what I mean? Like you've tried it on, it feels good, it looks even, feels even. You know, then then make sure you do this because just the, the more that you sew stuff and then take it apart, you're just damaging the fabric. And every time you damage the fabric, you leave holes and that just leaves weaknesses, which later on as you wear it, those little tiny damages could turn into big, huge holes in your garment. So always double, triple check some of these tricky parts. But now that we're good, let's go ahead and sew this. Clean it up right now 